So, some of you have been wondering if it's worth going to a volcano on your printer or if it comes with any disadvantages. Well, today I want to find out. So, the difference between a volcano and a V6 is the longer melt zone, as you can see with the bigger nozzles. The V6 nozzles, or this ones, they are very short relatively and the filament doesn't get much time to heat up in this, which is actually fine because you're not pushing filament really fast inside your hot end. But when you start using bigger nozzles, you're extruding more material at once. So your extruder is working harder and pushing more of the filament faster through your hot end. And what happens is that if this is your filament, filament is made usually made out of plastic and it's a very bad conductor. So what happens is the outside gets warm but the inside still stays hot and to an extreme degree it just doesn't have time to melt. So your extruder either ends up clicking not being able to push non-molten filament out of the hot end or your prints will suffer from low layer adhesion. So there's something called a volumetric extrusion which is like how much filament you can push at once and for a V6 that's for me around 12. For a volcano, that's around 35, so it means you can push more filament at once, allowing you to print faster and use bigger nozzles. Keep in mind that for usually a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the speed you're limited at is usually just your mechanics and your printer, not the hot end. But if you use bigger nozzles like 0.8, you're forced to stick to something like 12 or 20 millimeters per second with a V6. While on the volcano, you're theoretically able to achieve faster speech, speeds such as like 30 or more, which makes a huge difference. The way you can feel this by yourself is when you're pushing filament manually through your hot end. At first, you may notice the filament goes in very easily, and then you just hit like a stop and it's harder to extrude filament out. What happens is that it's the hot end can't melt the filament fast enough, and you can notice this by just you know by feeling more pressure on your hands. And on a volcano, it's much easier to just push more filament through your hot end by your hands. It's kind of like candle wax or coconut oil. If you've ever heated some, the outside gets all molten while the inside stays hot. This is like a more extreme version of this, but it still helps to show what I'm trying to talk about. So for comparison, this is a volcano nozzle and this is a normal nozzle. Note that these two are not compatible with each other. So you need to use the proper nozzle for, for the volcano or the V6. To test it, I first printed a few cubes and you can see them all here. I started with the 0.4mm nozzle to see the more everyday common usage and to be honest the volcano is obviously better for bigger nozzles but the main question is does it pose any disadvantages for your everyday prints and as you can see this is the volcano print and this is the v6 while they look similar in everywhere they the volcano has massively more ringing oh i couldn't get it to focus so i had to switch the camera so as you can see the print, the cube printed with the volcano has massively more ringing than, sorry, I meant stringing, than the cube printed with the V6. This is obviously due to the longer heat zone. And if you're wondering why it tilted this way, it was something loose on my printer. I fixed it and printed another one. It looks the same, I'll show you now. So the thing I tried to do was to increase my retractions. And I tried to go up to 0.8, it kind of reduced it, but as you can see, it still has ringing, sorry, stringing some parts. So what I tried next was to reduce my temperature from 205 that I used on the V6 to 180. And as you can see, it looks slightly better. I'm not sure. Actually, this is not the cube I'm talking about. Wait, I lost the cube, I think. Okay, it looks, yeah, this is the one. As you can see, after reducing the temperature, it looks much better. There's the tiniest bit of stringing, but I really don't think that matters anymore. But the problem is with that amount of stringing, ring, sorry, retraction, you get very slight kind of dots, missing parts and around your parts. And I printed this retraction test as a, 
as kind of like something to test it out and as you can see there's herring which I actually get with the V6 too that might be just a dirty nozzle and this guy focuses as you can see there's some dots missing and I improved this by reducing the retraction and putting a minus value like minus 0.1 on the extra retraction distance so it doesn't it, retra it detracts less after it retracts because of the oozing and that helped but I get the tiniest bit of holes on there overall it's manageable but not ideal so I would prefer the V6 for normal everyday 0.4 millimeter prints and you might be wondering after reducing my temperature so by so much doesn't it affect my layer adhesion well the answer is that I don't have any scientific methods to test it but from what I can tell it still takes the same amount of pressure to break these compared to the V6 as you can see yeah it still take, takes quite a little bit of effort to break these and I haven't managed to break any of these on either the V6 or the volcano and as you can see it's I, to my hands it feels the same I am I sadly don't have equipment to test this but yeah so next just for fun I tried to print a little few really big things like this this is hilarious 0.75 millimeter layer height cube and yeah it looks hilarious but it's printed in three minutes just for fun this is a bunchy I printed a 0.75 millimeter layer hearts with a one millimeter nozzle and yep again looks hilarious but it finished in 30 minutes sorry 13 minutes actually when I try to print this vase mode print we come across a huge problem with the volcano as you can see if you print really fast with big nozzles there's a huge issue that I did not think of earlier and that's cooling when I was printing all of these, as you can see from the tip, when I picked this print up, it was so hot that it still burned my hands despite my 100% cooling speed, fan speed, I guess. And I could still deform this print by hand after it was out of the printer. So we come across another issue which makes us slow down significantly, which is cooling fans. So unless you have really, really good cooling, you kind of are forced to reduce your print speed anyway, down to something really huge, really small, unless you do something like print two of the same part at the same time, or just like get better cooling. It's really like you can, it gets kind of weird at some point. You really need extreme cooling. And what happened here is that it just, it was so hot that the filament just kind of like dripped inside of itself. And it wasn't like, yeah, able to hold its shape. I printed this by the way and I gifted it to my stepsister so I can't show you, but I printed it at like 20 millimeters per second and it worked out great. It looks fine, but try, if you go any faster, you can't do anything really. So the next thing I did was to see if there's any issues with the really small and slow prints with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So I tried to print this bunchy with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle at a really low speed because I mean I didn't change the speed but considering how small it is it was forced to go slow and I used 0.1 millimeter nozzle 0.1 millimeter layer height to make it push as little filament as I possibly could make it to you I mean push so as you can see it came out really fine there's really nothing I could complain about. It looks like it doesn't have any issues, but I guess let's say carbonizing the filament or anything. I have some artifacts on the side, but I have a feeling that's not really about the nozzle and more about my settings and the printer. And yeah, the tip is a little molten, but I think that's just me not using a minimum layer type. And as you can see, everything else looks just fine for such a really small nozzle. I mean, this is like the tip of my finger. You can tell how small this is. And yeah, as you can see, it still has some stringing, which I guess I have some hard time. I have a hard time fighting on my direct drive volcano, but yeah. So you might be wondering, is the volcano worth it? Well, the answer is it depends. The volcano is made for a very specific audience. 
and it's for and if you are the kind of person who can manage and is who can manage better cooling and does often actually print with big nozzles then yeah sure if you can manage the stringing at lower smaller nozzles then go ahead keep in mind that the stringing is only an issue with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle because it has more pressure inside but the bigger nozzles you barely need any retraction this was with almost no retraction with the one millimeter nozzle and as you can see it only has a slight herring and keep in mind this is with pretty much no retractions at all it, not even linear advance was enabled for this because you would freak out with the one millimeter nozzle i don't know why but yeah so if you often print with a bigger nozzle then go ahead it's kind of hard to tame the stringing of the smaller nozzles but if you often print with big nozzles and you can ensure that your cooling act can actually let you reach the higher speeds then go with it but for the 80 percent of users the average users who want to just like print cute stuff or the average mechanical parts they want it's really really not worth it because the kind of speeds that you can you have to reach at 0.4 millimeter with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to kind of use the volumetric extrusion of the volcano it doesn't make sense to print that fast because after a certain point your print time only like increases by decreases by one percent for like a huge speed gain and no matter how high your acceleration is you're kind of not really getting anything out of increasing your speeds that high so for the average user who just wants to print cute minis or wants to print weird wacky stuff like this ocarina i don't know how to play it but here you go and for the kind of users who prints 3d printer parts like this and sometimes fell like this it's really not worth it to go with a volcano so if you know what you're doing and you really and you do use with big nozzles often then the volcano might be worth into consideration but i feel like this vol the volcano is really not made for the average user and made more for like special place the special people who really do kind of make sense make makes sense for them to use huge layer heights and make prints like this often obviously this has issues but i can't you can obviously tell there's not much of a detail left there really so it's up to you if you print with big nozzles often then it might be worth a look i hope this video has been helpful bye <laughs>